Hello everybody and welcome back to Tony Northeastern and the third part of building this water tower. Um, I've had yet again a tremendous amount of comments regarding the water tower and uh, before we go on to that um, I think we all guessed by now uh, this would have been a lamp hut. So we've got that one out of the way. Now then, the water tower. This is becoming very intriguing, um, judging by the amount of comments I've had um, regarding this water tower. And I think I may have made a mistake or two. But... Um, let's look at the evidence so here we are we're going back to basics um, this would be ideal for some of you new subscribers who um, have not seen the research video I did before I started to build the station um, the reason why we're coming back here is I want to look at these three little buildings that we've got here on the map you've got the signal box Got the water tower and you've got the little um what do you call it lamp hut there and there's no sign of the little building that was added to the side or in standing of beside the water tower um, there's even an earlier map of this one uh, which shows the tracks going down to the quayside and the staves. Um, that map does not show the railway station. Um, once the water tower is complete, the next building I'm going to tackle is this little box here, which is the Waybridge and Hut. Um, we touched on it uh, a couple of videos back, looking at uh, the building which does not fit in with the rest of the station. It's a uh, weird looking building anyway just uh just wanted to show you this because it's uh there's a little so shield station was built in 879 by the that's depot 1835 it was to the south all traces of that route and the stairs are gone so there there you go so it did go further on and apparently there was massive warehouse here and that's still relevant here so the next photograph here we are we're looking at this photograph it was taken um, in the 50s I think it was judging by the rolling stop and if we look closer and closer and closer at the water tower you can see a little chimney pot popping up there look I can't see any structures around it, so it must have belonged to the water tower. But in later photographs, it's not there. I only wish I could see around that semaphore to see if that... Uh, we can just make it out. Um, there's the pinnacle of the semaphore. Maybe not. Anyway, I thought I'd show you that. At least here we have another photograph and it just shows all of the handrails on the top. And I still can't see that chimney pot. It's not there. So I have a, a dilemma. Do I put a chimney breast on the back of it? Or maybe just put a chimney breast on the back and have it capped off? Hmm. So as you can see, all you've got left of the signal box is just a pile of rubble. I 
I think that's why I like the coffee and comments moments going through the comments seeing what other people see that sometimes I forget to see which really does does help me out and uh, I do appreciate that uh, very much so um, now it's time to concentrate on the main reason we're here building the tank so before we get stuck into the tank I just want to quickly go over um, what I have done with the base uh, as you can see I have painted and weathered the sandstones um, on the lintels and the sills so that's ready now to receive the tank so this part of the build is finished I think so before we start we go back to the drawing and in the last video we worked out all the sizes for the tank um, so what we're looking at now we're looking at 40, 34 mil plus 4 millimeters for the rib that goes around the tank separates the tank from the from the um, tower and we need 4 millimeters to go into the tank which sits on this lip here so basically we need a strip card 42 millimeters long so now what we've got to do, we've got to make up a box that will drop inside and then we can start making up the panels. So I have cut this strip of card uh, but I'm not sure if the edges are square so I'll just get a square just to make sure. Now I've already trimmed a millimetre off of this just to make sure I've got a nice square edge. And uh, I've marked it in. Um, for the width of the front panels so this is the first front panel the side panels I will make two millimeters smaller so it sits inside these front and back panels so hopefully that will sit inside there so now that you've cut your card to fit inside the box there just make sure that their front and backs are both identical side to sides same with the end pieces just make sure that they're they're flush uh, because you want a nice square box really so we've got a front and backs now the first thing we've got to do is because we've got this little bracket here which is going to support the LED we need to notch out to go over the top of that now we know that that card is two millimeters thick so what we'll do we'll just mark a line across the bottom there two millimeters and then find out where the center is mark it and then notch out for the width of the bracket that's in there that's going to support the LED As you can see, I have marked the centre line all the way up because that may come in handy for when we come to mark out the panels. Um, I have cut out a notch there which hopefully should stride the bracket and sit flat on the ledge that's in there already. And it seems to do that. It sits on that ledge nicely. So that's a gluing point for when we actually finish the tank. So we have that. So the next thing I want to do is to strengthen it up. So as you can see, I have cut the backing pieces for the fronts and the backing pieces for the sides. Hopefully these will stiffen up the walls. Um, and I've also made a centre um, support which will go in the middle of the box like that so it doesn't clash with the LED. You remember that 2mm line? 
Well, I'm using that as a reference for these backing pieces. So they sit on there and hopefully will eventually keep the side walls straight. So I'm using that as a guide. So this then will rest on the bracket as well when it's glued. So I shall continue gluing the rest of these on. Just PVA in them on. And uh, I have left a gap for the one millimeter sides that way on. So as you're gluing these um, stiffeners on, just check now and again just to make sure you've got all your calculations right. Um, so you've got a nice overlap. So the one mil card overlaps the one mil card on the edge, and the two mil overlaps the two mil on the inside. Now the front and backs, remember that uh, centre line um, we drew? So if we just carry that through, so it's on the inside as well, then we can mark out for where the centre support will go. Then what you do, you get your centre support, put it bang in the middle of the line, and just draw either side. Do the same this one. And then if you've got some scrap bits of card, just cut a couple of strips, and then glue that one millimeter side of this centre line and then that then will slot in there when we come to glue it. Just making sure you've got a, a nice snug fit. So as you can see we've glued our stiffeners in ready to take the support truss. Um, before we go any further I just want to just go through a few dimensions with you. From there to there is 32 millimeters, and I've left 8 millimeters from the top of the tank to that ridge there. The reason being is that's going to take the top, and then that just leaves a little bit of a lip there. That's going to be about 6 mil. So this is going to represent the water when we're finished. Just remember one thing, always do a dry fit first, just to make sure that the components do go together. So, now that we've glued it all together, we just want to make sure that it has come out reasonably square. Because the next bit now is to glue the top in, which will uh, be the water. So all I did there was just measured the space that we've got and just knocked off half a millimetre either side just so that it fits in there snugly. Just uh, move the glue around a little bit. Make sure we get, get it where it needs to be. So with that in there, that really makes it a solid box, which I'll say, tank. And that should just drop in there. Now I know it's going to be a tight squeeze. So there's one more little job we have to do before we um, put the tank on and that's to fit the LED. 
First thing to do with the LED is to bend it. Um, I want to bend it at a right angle. So I just put it in between a set of tweezers, hold the electrodes, and then push the electrodes over. Because the cable needs to come this way to go down through the little um, slot that we put in. Basically, we'll just press that in there, and what I'll do is I'll get a little bit of super glue and put it around the edges, not on the electrodes. A little bit of super glue just around the edges there, just so it just holds it in there. So the LEDs I'm using are the warm LEDs and I got them from bright components. So what you just see me do there is cut off the long leg which is the positive. And then what we do then we'll just solder on a one quarter one five R resistor. What I've done here is I've just put a little bit of flux onto the resistor and a little bit of solder on the solder iron. And then we'll just marry the two together. Like so. Now for the cables, I've already trimmed back the neutral side of the LED and I've already checked to make sure that the cores are cut to the right length. So we're going to start with the neutral first. I'm just going to just gently touch it. Hopefully, solder will take. So that's a neutral in place. As you can see, I've got the heat shrink ready as well. So what I'll do is I'll just put the heat shrink over that. But I'll not heat shrink it on yet until I've done the the live. It is a little bit fiddly this because there's not a lot of space in this building. So I'll just get a little bit more solder. Do the live. Right, so that's two joints soldered on. So what I'll do now, I'll check it to make sure that the LED is working, and then we'll put the heat shrink on over the top of the joints. And now we have light and uh, I may have to do something about that door, I may have to give that another coat of paint. But you can see the detail in the room there, which is good. To shrink the heat shrink, all I use is the back edge of the soldering iron and just go around the whole of the cable if you can to shrink it. And it just covers up the, the solder joint. And what I'll do then is I'll just put this one together and that then keeps them both together. Adds a little bit of strength to the cables as well, just in case they get tugged. So before we make a start on detail in the tank, um, I had a comment from Jason. Um, regarding this here and uh, I think I agree with him this is one tank this here is a cover for an inline inline bead pipe to the tank so I'm tending to go with that 
but it'll still be added to the model as part of the detail. So I just thought I'd uh, like to clarify that. I mean, the amount of comments I've had regarding this water tower has been absolutely brilliant because now I know how exactly I want this to look when I'm finished. So what I'm doing to start with, I'm marking a depth line um, which the tank actually sits onto the base of the tower which is roughly four millimeters. Um, so hopefully when that's fitted to the base of the tower this is where the detailing starts from this baseline. So I've just marked the line all the way around at four millimeters. So now we have the baseline mark. So when that's sitting in there, so when that's sitting in there, like so, that's where the detail starts. That's where we build the tank up from from that line I've just marked. Next thing I want to do is divide the tank up into its rele relevant panels. So there'll be five on this side, three on the on the ends, like there is in the photograph. And what I'm going to be using is the two mil by 0.25 strips to split the panels up individually. So as you can see, I've added a few strips already, and uh, all I'm doing is super gluing them on. Which means you only get one shot at it. So we're fixing in place. What you do if you start in one corner and just gently lower it down as you go, and you should end up where it needs to be, which is flush to the top in this case. So it's not going to look exactly like the photograph, but uh, we'll see how we get on. So what you have to do, you have to keep continuously checking where to put your strips. Um, as you can see, I've got, I've got a center line, but I need to come off a millimeter either side of the center line, because this is two millimeters. So one day I'm going to put the downhand ones in first and then do the cross ones. So as you can see I've divided this up into six equal panels. Um, but the detail does not finish there. What I'm going to do next, once I've done all the others, I'm going to add some one mil strip, um, one by one mil strip, down across all the way around and down the middles as well so it just brings it out a little bit you'll see as we go along so i've got all this to do yet yeah. 